Hi, YouTube. God loves you. God bless you. Sorry that my voice is a little probably uh, scratchy or so. I've uh, had I've been working, and uh, the last 11 days I worked five on, had one off, worked five again. Now I got my three off right now, and so I'm kind of just wanted to make a video real quick and stuff, and I wanted to discuss something like well, it's kind of on my heart, like um. Well, two things. I don't remember if I said this when I meant to, if I if I didn't in the last video or so. I mean, I feel like that, okay, like in the Bible, like that God actually has not even had his rest yet. And I'm going to say a couple things to real quick, like that could back up what I'm saying. You could look up yourself that in the Bible it talked about in the seven days about God. Where he created the heavens, the earth, uh, he created all this other stuff. Then on the sixth day, he created man. It said on the sixth day that he created man in his image. And then it said on the seventh day, he rested. So, okay, between that and then between uh, the Bible discussing, uh, like talking about how God never sleeps, never slumbers, and he's always watching over his children, all his creation. So, because, you know, because there is bad among us, uh, like there's bad people, there's the illness, diseases, there's death, suffering, all these other things. So, he never sleeps, never slumbers. So, he's never rested yet. And the other thing that I want to say real quick to back up that whole idea of mine about why he hasn't rested yet is because it says that his children, that when we're called up to heaven, will enter God's rest. Because I'm just saying this because it was something that I had thought about. These are the things I try to think more about and to learn more about, to know more about God, and to know as much as I can. See, that was the difference between Moses and the Israelites, and that's why most of them died, you know, was because they only, they grumbled against Moses and God because they only wanted from God. They grumbled when they didn't get their way, but they never sought God for who he was. That's why Moses was like a friend, you know, and well, God's friend. And uh, God was Moses' friend. And they were more than just, you know, uh, you're our God and we're your servants. They were like friends. Moses sought God for who he was, not what he could do for him. And think about the the fact that Moses had turned down. He, he was uh, adopted by Pharaoh's daughter. He literally had inherited the kingdom of Egypt, he, the palace and all that. He could easily just had all that wealth and honor. But he chose to throw it away because he sought God, and he sought that he he like he wanted something more. He knew that he and his people were meant for more. God put that all in his heart. I mean, he could have easily said, "I don't want to go talk to this burning bush. I don't want to go see what's going on. I don't, you know, I don't care about my people." I mean, so yeah. So, anyways, these are thoughts to to my, you know, my. These are all why I believe my theory is that God has not entered rest yet. He hasn't rested yet, even though the Bible says the Bible. How many times does it prophecy the future? How many times did it foretell of things long before they would happen? They talked about the Messiah, how he would suffer. I mean, they talked about all these other things and just, you know, yeah. Um, so that there's that I want to discuss real quick. And then that um, there's one more thing I wanted to discuss. So there's like because I've been trying to get more in depth in it and, and trying to understand more something I've been pondering in my mind lately was been has been what did Jesus mean when he said the wind bloweth where it listed and you hear the sound thereof but you cannot perceive you cannot see where it, once it comes or where it goes he said so is those born of the spirit so I was wondering what exactly did that mean but I started doing some research and I do believe that this makes the most sense, and then I can give a story to back up, kind of explain it a little better. So the person that I had read a couple of different theories from different people online, and one of them said that um, basically those of the spirit, those that are born of the spirit, those born again, the spirit will like whisper in your ear these things, and whisper it'll whisper things for you to do, and the way you should take, the way you should go. And sometimes people might think of you crazy or whatever because, you know, you're doing something completely out of, it's different, you know, even different for you yourself even, you know, even as a Christian and a person and you might go out of your routine and your way and do something different because the spirit, you know, leads you. So I believe, you know, I mean, you, you know, and you, you know, 
you can feel the wind, you can hear the wind, but you can't see the wind. And the spirit is that for us, but also that it can guide us and stuff in, in even directions unknown, unbeknownst to us and, you know, that we never would normally take or do. And so a story I'm going to give as a description real quick, and then I'll let you guys go. But, um, is that, uh, I remember going on YouTube and I saw a video, a person was telling a story about God talking to them. And it was like five or seven or ten minutes or something like that. It was just them saying that they hadn't heard the, the voice of God in a long time or, or something like that. Or I'm trying to remember the best I can, but so I'm, I might not like remember word for word, of course. But um, so that, that they were just driving, you know, and they was wondering if, you know, God speaks to people. Maybe that's what it was. They were just wondering if God speaks to people. And so they prayed and they asked God to speak to them. Then they just heard gentle whispers in their ears of you know drive down the street they don't go down that street they don't like it was late at night it was like midnight or something i think they were getting off of work or something or doing so and so and so they i guess this little whisper said go down this way go down this road then it said go to that store right there buy a gallon of milk they said they were saying that how crazy it is and why would they they don't need milk and they're not you know thirsty and all this other stuff then the spirit apparently had whispered and told them a direction to take and then they got to this corner <clears throat> excuse me and the corner on the corner there was this house and it was like midnight or something and all the lights were out and they didn't even think anyone was home or if they were they were asleep but so the spirit said take that milk and go knock on the door so they went and they knocked on the door of the house then no response at first so then they started to walk away as they were walking away someone answered they turned around and they went to you know uh to see who answered the door and i think it was a husband or or it was a husband or wife and maybe one of them had the kid or the other one had the kid and the baby in the, in the, the, the kitchen or something but anyways that family was up that night and they were crying the, the parents because they had no milk for their baby so they didn't know what they were going to do and i think they said something about they were praying to god or or something but but anyways that stranger wanted to know if people can hear god if god can talk to people and if people can hear god and that that person got that answer i mean so anyways so i believe is what christ was trying to like i believe that's a good example of you know where the, where the spirit will lead us you know strange and different things and territories and to things that maybe we wouldn't normally do that would be out of our character or out of you know who we are or what we do but i mean like we're supposed to be we're supposed to be children of god we're supposed to be children of the light children who who like okay the, the spirit will whisper in our ears sometimes to take this direction jesus said so and then we follow that direction you know if we're really children of god then we're going to follow we're going to go down that path but no, you know, even sometimes unbeknownst to us what it is what or where God's leading us, but we have to have faith, whatever it is, through any dark valley or, you know, any mountain or et cetera. There's no mountain high enough, no valley dark enough that God can't shine his light and his love and that he can't protect us. And, um, I mean, you never know. So, I don't know. That's like kind of like a, a description, I believe, of what maybe that other person was trying to say about like that uh the spirit will lead us and so that's kind of what i think christ was you know getting at when he said you hear the sound thereof but you can't tell whether it comes or goes so everyone is born of the spirit so that's my whole take on those two things that's what i believe and stuff and you could I, I want you all to read the bible to look these up to you know go on your phone do research as well but uh just don't go under any like different things i wouldn't look up necessarily catholic stuff and especially like you know book of mormon i call it the book of mormon they don't call it the holy bible because they change stuff or add stuff and then they want to say that it's okay to marry you have seven wives or multiple wives and catholics though like i said they bow down to statues they pray to the mother mary she was just a person and her part was to have christ she i mean she's i don't know why people pray to her she couldn't answer prayers and how could she intercede for her son she couldn't but christ is the one we pray to the father the son the holy ghost we pray to them we don't we shouldn't be praying to other things or other people we shouldn't be praying to the angels because 
you know, I mean, I just, I think that's kind of absurd too, that that's ridiculous. I'm going to pray to the Archangel Michael or so-and-so. I mean, I think they would probably even tell you that it's ridiculous to pray to them when you should be praying to the Father, you know, and the one who died for you and the Holy Spirit. Now, I pray, let thank God for the angels that he sends to protect us and for, you know, his children. And, I mean, I pray for that, and, you know, but um, anyways, God loves you all. I hope you have a blessed week.